The king of this area, Sheba, he had passed away. When the king passed away, he had left back of no son as a lineage to continue his kingdom. And the only person that he left behind was a girl who was amongst the children of this king. At this moment, a Thalabi, a historian, he writes that after this, this girl, she was a young girl, a man was given the responsibility to become the king after the king had passed away. This man became the new king of Sheba. A lot of corruption and a lot of mischief prevailed in the area of, of Sheba. And of course, this girl who had lived her life in true honesty by seeing her dad to be the true leader of Sheba, she could not realize and she could not take this. That how can the kingdom of her dad be destroyed in a specific manner? So when she grew a little older, she herself decided to marry this individual. When she had married him on the first night, it is mentioned by Ibn Kathir himself that she gave him a lot of wine to drink. So much to an effect that he became drunk and the same night she assassinated and slain him and the next morning she took over the tribe of Sheba and she became the queen of Sheba at this time. This is the narration of what Ibn Kathir writes, the beginning of how a woman became the leader of the people of Sheba at this time. The story of Suleiman salam, Hudhud Bilqis starts from this incident. Suleiman salam, looks towards the people and Suleiman salam, says that verily, I do not find Hudhud around this area. He said, if I do not find Hudhud very very soon, either I will punish Hudhud by, by cutting the throat of Hudhud, meaning killing Hudhud, or I will give him the most severest of the punishment. After a little while, Suleiman salam, while looking amongst the many animals, the jinns and the humans which was beneath his kingdom, finally found Hudhud come. And it says, Hudhud, you will not be accepted amongst us until you give me a strong excuse. So at this point, Hudhud said that I will give you such a news that you have never heard of before. And the news which will amaze even you of what has happened to a certain group of people. He said, while I was flying over a group of people known, known as the nation of Saba'a, when I was flying over this people, I saw that there was a woman, which the hadith of Rasulullah explains to us, a woman known as Bilqis. She is the queen of these people. And she governs the entire town and tribe of Saba'a. And they have two things that they do. They worship the sun as their Lord, and she has the most beautiful throne that anyone can have. As soon as he heard this message, he said, Indeed, there is none worthy of worship but Allah. How is possible that these people are worshipping someone rather than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So at this moment, Sulaiman said, I will give you a letter, and I will send you a letter and go and drop this off to her. And let's see what they, what they say to us. By mentioning that indeed this letter is from Sulaiman, the Nabi of Allah, towards the, the woman which is Bilqis, the queen of Saba, and he writes with the name of Allah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I begin with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the entire letter of Sulaiman was sent. When this letter was sent towards Bilqis, Hudhud went and he dropped it off. When she found this letter, when she received this, she did not make a decision herself. She consulted with all the chieftains, all the chiefs of her kingdom, she gathered them together. And she says, I will not make a decision until I take each and every of your opinion. Because I am the one who don't make decision until you approve of it. So as soon as she recited this letter from Sulaiman towards them, the chief said, Oh the queen, we have strength, we have power. We have ability and forces to destroy this person. Why don't you give us a chance? The queen of Saba, known as the queen of Sheba, Bilqis, she was a very intelligent and a smart woman. She says that I have noticed that when kings take over other nations, they destroy their families and, and, and generations to come. And the most honorable people amongst them become the most disgraceful. So I don't want to take a chance. Give me another opinion. So then she thought, thought of an idea to send some gifts to Sulaiman 
that if he is only a person looking to take over countries and places to become a king, then he would accept my gift. He would accept my hadiyah and he will close his mouth. I can just bribe him off with the wealth and he will become quiet. The chieftains took these gifts and went to Sulaiman As soon as these gifts were presented, Sulaiman looked at them and says, whatever you have brought to me, Allah has given me much more than this. You have not come to the right person. I am not a person who will get just by bringing these gifts, I will not be bought by these gifts. Go back to them and verily tell your queen, if she does not accept our word, then we will come in such a force that nothing of the nation of Sheba will be left. As soon as the chieftains went back to Bilqis, the queen of Sheba or the nation of Saba, when she realized that Sulaiman had not accepted these gifts, she realized that indeed he was not only a king. Because he is the Nabi or he is a true person, that's why he has not accepted any of the monetary gifts. Sulaiman invited Bilqis to come and visit this kingdom and see what is going on which what Allah has given. So as soon as she decided to come towards Sulaiman when they received the news of Bilqis coming towards Sulaiman in towards this area which was known as Bayt al-Maqdas or Jerusalem at the time, it is mentioned that Sulaiman was sitting within his companions, many jinns and many, many people and humans and birds and all different creations were sitting beneath the kingdom of Sulaiman So Sulaiman asked, which amongst you is a person which can bring me the throne of Bilqis before she comes to me? One of the biggest of the, of the jinns which were present in the gathering of Sulaiman got up. And he says, indeed, I will fulfill this task. And how fast can you bring it, Ifrit? He said, I will bring it before you get up from this gathering finishes. The throne of Bilqis will be in front of you. He, Sulaiman says, this is too long for me. And then he said, who else is present here? There was a person whom with Allah had given the ilm of kitab. A person on the other side who Allah had granted knowledge and ilm. He said, I will bring this before the closing and the opening of your eyes. I will bring it in such a pace that before you notice again, the throne of Bilqis will be with you. As soon as the order was given towards this individual, the throne of Bilqis was brought towards Sulaiman salam. And Sulaiman salam ordered the jinns and the humans present in his kingdom to make the changes in the throne that she cannot distinguish it right away. So when she came within the kingdom of Sulaiman salam and she noticed the throne and she knew that there was no throne like the throne of hers. She says, is this really mine? And how can it be? And can travel before me and such a big throne can come towards you. So at this moment she was amazed by this. But still subhanallah, Hidayat is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hidayat and the truth still did not click in her mind. She did not still believe in Allah. She saw her own throne in front of her eyes, which came before she even came. But she still did not accept. Is this really mine? It looks like mine. So the Imam Islam says, indeed it is yours. And she was surprised and stunned by this action. And she knew that indeed this person had given much more than what we were expecting. The ayat of the Qur'an continues, in which Sulaiman invites her to come within the palace that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given Sulaiman When she entered inside the palace, there was a floor which was made with glass, and beneath the glass was water and fishes. So as soon as Bilqis was about to step upon this, she picked up her clothing, so her clothing does not become wet when she puts her feet inside. When she places her feet on this floor, she realizes that this is not water, but indeed this is the glass. Her ankles showed because of her lifting her clothing not to become wet from the water. This is not water, but this is glass. And this is the kingdom and the power and the strength that Allah has granted this person that no one else has. And this was the time when the iman clicked inside her life. And this was a time when she realized and she visually seen and she says indeed that there is none worthy of worship but Allah and I believe in Sulaiman to be the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed we turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the creator and the one who made the humans and the jinns. That what happened after Sulaiman alayhi salam? Did he marry Bilqis or he did not do so? 
Ibn Kathir rahmatullah alayhi also mentions this. And Thalabi also mentions that when, when Suleiman alayhi salam married her, meaning he got married with, with Bilqis, he returned her to the kingdom of Yemen and she continuously ruled them. And Suleiman alayhi salam would just go and visit her here and there. And Suleiman alayhi salam had built the three kingdoms, meaning three castles within the place where Bilqis used to live.